I've had this mini PC for a little while now, and I gotta say, it's been pretty cool having my own little mini PC hooked up to my TV. If you haven't seen my review of this, make sure to check it out. This one has a good amount of I.O. on the front, and something that made this one unique is it also has USB 4. I don't have any other devices with USB 4, including my main PC, it's just too old. This opens up a lot of possibilities. I was sent over an external GPU from WetGeek, and I'm really interested to see how this thing is to set up. How hard is it to hook up an external GPU, set it up, and is it worth it for you guys to buy one? So today, I'm going to hook up the new external GPU that I got to this PC here. Give it a try and see how it performs. You are going to need a mini PC with USB 4 to do this. This was sent over for review by WetGeek. As with all my reviews, they're not seeing this review beforehand. All opinions are my own, and of course they're not paying me for this review. I just give you guys my honest thoughts to what I think about these products. Let's open up this external GPU, take a closer look, and see what the experience is like. I went through a lot of loopholes trying to get this thing working, and it was honestly a lot simpler than I thought it was. In the box, you'd have the external GPU on top here. In the smaller box was the power cable and a USB 4 cable. I do recommend using their cable to hook this up, but the one that they provide is really high quality. This is the USB 4 cable that they sent over. This is actually really high quality. It's really malleable, and the ends are made out of metal. This cable is about 2.5 to 3 feet long. I personally think this is a really good size for a USB cable. You want something long enough to give you decent amount of space between this and the PC, and I think this does a really good job. We have a simple power cable, and of course we have the eGPU itself. I gotta admit, when I opened this thing, all I could think of was just, wow, this thing feels super high quality. I've never looked at any GPD devices or anything from GPD. This however is pretty interesting. This entire eGPU is pretty much made out of metal. The sides are completely made out of metal. The front of course is metal. The bottom is metal. And the top is metal. So this entire thing is just one big solid block of metal. I think the design is pretty neat too. You got a fan intake here on the top for cold air, and you got some exhaust on the side where all that hot air comes out. There's also some air intake around the top on both sides. And I think this is really nice because this keeps this GPU running cool. Let's jump in and take a closer look to see what this GPU actually is. This has the Radeon 6700 MXT in it. This is actually a pretty good GPU. Let's take a closer look at the specs of this GPU to see what makes it so special. So yeah, first things first, let's take a look at this device and see what exactly it is. This is the 7600 MXT. This is based on a 6 nanometer process. This is actually a very new GPU. It has USB 4 support and Oculink support. I'm going to be using this with my USB 4 interface because I don't have any devices that support Oculink. This is going to give us 40 gigabits per second effective bandwidth, which is definitely less than the Oculink, but I still think it should be pretty decent for what we're playing with it. This supports FSR 3.0, and we also get 4096 stream processors. Another thing that's pretty neat with this is it also supports AV1 encoding, so this could be really good for a content creator. We get the Oculink and the USB 4 ports on the front. We also have the mode switch on the front, which will toggle between quiet and normal modes, as well as the power switch. On the back, we have the AC adapter. We have three USB 3.2s, Type A. We have an SD 4.0 card reader. We have two DisplayPort 1.4s and an HDMI 2.1. If you use this in silent mode, it's going to use 60 watts. But if you turn that to its gaming mode, it's going to jump all the way to 100. This video card also has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. 128 bit video memory bus. This GPU has a base clock of 1.5 gigahertz. With game clock on, it'll go up to 2.3. If you give this enough power though, it'll go all the way up to 2.6 gigahertz. They've given us some benchmarks here, but I think these are a little optimistic. 
Unfortunately, with this dock in particular, I haven't been able to get it working with my Legion Go or my Ally X. I've only been able to get it working with that mini PC. With AMD drivers right now, this is just pretty much impossible to use with the Ally X or the Lenovo Legion Go. You effectively have to replace the drivers on it when you're docking. Then when you undock, you have to put the Z1 Extreme drivers in. So that doesn't really make for a very seamless experience constantly switching the drivers. It does work for mini PCs really well. I think when AMD updates their drivers for the Z1 Extreme to include eGPUs, this is going to be a really nice GPU to have for that. But for now, I would only recommend this for mini PCs. As mentioned, this was sent over to me by WhatGeek. They have free worldwide shipping on their website. You can also get a nice discount using my coupon code. I'll leave that coupon code and a link in the description below if you're interested in grabbing one of these. Now let's take a closer look at the graphics card itself and try some games with it. To set this up is pretty easy. I had a lot of trouble setting this up when I first got it, but let me show you the easiest way to set this up. First things first, you gotta connect this to your power. So I've got that connected to the power. Now I need to hook up my mini PC. I'm going to connect my keyboard and mouse directly to my mini PC because I have some USB 2s on this. These ones on here are much quicker. So I'm going to connect that, then I'm going to turn this on. There's a button on the front to turn that on, so let's go ahead and do that. We also want to connect that USB 4 port. You're going to plug one into the computer and one into the graphics card. You might also might want to get a smaller cable if you got a lot of extra cable like I do. Okay, I've just turned on the mini PC and it's already recognizing the graphics card. I plugged in the HDMI cable to the mini PC itself, which is not something that you want to do because that's going to default to using the iGPU. We want to use the external graphics card and we know it's working because this little icon down here has shown up. Now that we have this working, I'm going to unplug the HDMI and put it into the eGPU. All right, now that I've got that connected, let's double check to make sure that that's working. To make sure that that's working correctly, I'm gonna right click on the desktop, go to the display settings. Under the advanced display settings, it does show that that's connected to the 7600MXT. Now that that's connected, let's take a quick peek at the GPU specs. GPU-Z instantly recognized the graphics card. We can see the 7600MXT is working correctly this shows us that we have 2048 shaders, which is really good for an external GPU. So everything seems to be working. The sensors show that the GPU temperature is only running at 34 degrees Celsius, and it is doing a good job at clocking itself down because it's not doing anything. Let's try some AAA games to see how it runs. Let's start off testing this with Stray. So let's go try to set this to 1440p because I think that's where this GPU is going to shine. I'm also going to set this to max settings on everything with 100% resolution scale. This is running amazing on here. This is only clocking up the GPU to about 1.5 gigahertz. I think Stray is already an incredibly visually appealing game, but this is running at 1440p maxed out and it's working flawlessly at 60fps. Doesn't this just look incredible? Super smooth, max settings, 1440p. You definitely can't do this on the iGPU. This isn't even maxing the boost clock. This is only going to about 1.8 gigahertz and it's only using about 80% at that clock. So this is pretty impressive. This is only using 60 watts at this GPU. We're actually only using 3.6 gigabytes of VRAM at this too. So yes, games like Stray, absolutely incredible. And this is in silent mode too. I don't even need to use the boost clock on this. Let's try something a little bit more graphically demanding. Just for curiosity's sake, I left hardware info running in the background just to take a look at the GPU temperature, but it never went over 65 degrees Celsius. Returnal is one game that I've never had running well on any iGPU, mostly because this game has a VRAM leak. However, this should run pretty good on here because I have 8GB of dedicated VRAM and I also have a lot of RAM on the actual mini PC itself. Okay, so I've gone ahead and selected 1440p for this. I'm going to set this to quality FSR. I'm going to set everything to high settings just to see. I don't have ray traced reflections or ray traced shadows on, but everything else is set to high. I am using that FSR though and I do have my max FPS locked to 60FPS. Let's just turn on VSync. 
I've only ever seen this game run this good on my RTX 3080 on my desktop. Just look how smooth this is. I don't even have to crank this to the max boost for this GPU. It's still running at 57 watts. I am using 23 gigabytes of RAM though. That's crazy. But it's still running at 65 degrees. That's not bad at all. As someone that's never tried external GPUs, I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed. I could never run this game this well on any handheld. I can run a little bit of ray tracing on my RTX 3080, but for the most part, I don't really notice a difference in actual gameplay between this and my 3080. Obviously the 3080 is going to be better, but for your dollar, this is cheaper than buying a 3080. And if you already have a mini PC, this is not a bad way to go. Just out of curiosity's sake, I'm going to switch this into its gaming mode just to see what happens. So we're sitting at 60 watts right now. The GPU is at 1.9 gigahertz. So let's swap that over. So the GPU instantly went up to 2.1 gigahertz. However, the fan is extremely loud and I'm not sure if you can hear that. It's running at 86 watts right now, but it's gone down to 63% GPU usage and the temperature is sitting at 71 degrees. My main concern with the gaming mode is just how loud this thing is. Let me put the microphone right up to it and you're going to see how loud this is. I'm going to leave this game running in the meantime and I'm going to show you what this sounds like. I'm going to swap this back to its quiet mode just so you see how quiet this thing gets. I had no idea what to expect when I got this GPU. It's so smooth though. 7600M XT is one hell of an external GPU. I just hope that AMD finally manages to put the drivers in so I can use this on the ROG LIX and the Legion Go. I think it would be pretty nice to connect those to my TV and play some AAA gaming with some higher graphics. On Ghost of Tsushima this game is a little bit more CPU bound but I think we should be able to run this at pretty decent frame rates. I'm using the 7840HS on this mini PC. I'm going to try setting this to exclusive full screen at 1440p with 60Hz. I'm also using FSR 3 quality mode. I have frame generation shut off and I'm just going to use the very high preset. Actually, this is not bad at all. I'm maxing out the GPU though. Being in 60 watts, this can only go up to 1.6 gigahertz. So this is 1.6 gigahertz at 60 watts. If we crank that up to its gaming mode, let's see what the FPS goes up to. So that instantly jumps to 60. That's a nice boost but it is still very loud. In fact, it's loud enough you can probably hear it from my talking. What I would do personally, I would use this in silent mode, then just adjust the graphics as needed. There's a lot of things you can turn down without sacrificing the graphical fidelity. You can turn down the shadow quality ever so slightly, level of detail ever so slightly, volumetric fog is also really GPU intensive, and we've already gone up to 60 FPS. Yeah, so that really didn't take much to get that up to 60 FPS. It's also pretty quiet, not running in its game mode. As someone that's never tried eGPUs, I definitely see the value of these. It just looks incredible running this on something that wouldn't be able to usually run it this nice. As someone that's been a desktop gamer for most of his life, I can definitely see the appeal, especially if you don't have the room for a big desktop. You also have a lot of ports on this, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. For being niche for a lot of people, I definitely see the appeal of buying an external GPU. Having one of these, if you already own a mini PC, is incredible. And this is only going to get better when we can actually use this on the Legion Go and the Ally X flawlessly. You have plenty of I.O. for everything that you're going to need. USB 3.2 gives us plenty of USB bandwidth. We also have a full size SD card reader and I think this would be really cool for a lot of your emulation titles you could put on your SD card. While I do wish they had a little bit more IO on the front, maybe one extra USB-C, my personal preference is just to leave this in quiet mode because it's so much quieter than that normal gaming mode.
and the build quality is just phenomenal. I have never seen a product built this well. This thing is completely solid. I can't state enough how good this thing is built. This essentially eliminates two things that I was looking for in one. I really wanted an external GPU, but I also needed a nice USB hub. This gives me that nice USB hub style with a lot of IO and it also gives me the external GPU factor. If this is worth it for you, I don't really know. I can't personally wait to have external graphics cards support on the ROG Ally X. Because at the end of the day, when I bring that home and I just want to finish a game that I've been playing at work on my lunch, I can just hook this up to my TV with that game, max out the settings, and just have a blast finishing it. Is this worth it for you and would you spend that kind of money on it? Let me know in the comments below. At what price do you find an external graphics card worth it for you? If you already have this, let me know your experience with it and if you can get that fan curve under control a little bit better. As always, if you have any questions regarding this, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and as always, thanks for watching.